Hey, it's Kara, and Dobie Jo is next door visiting with the neighbors right now. She said she needed a break today, so I'm giving her the day off. You and I, however, are not getting the day off. We are going to work on page 42 in our book, Streets of Laredo. Now, Streets of Laredo is a song that's in 3-4 time. What does that mean? Whenever you see a fraction at the beginning of a piece of music, that top number is telling you how many beats you will find in every measure of music. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Three, four time. Okay? Forget about the bottom number. You don't need to worry about that right now. Just put it out of your mind. In 4-4, four, four, we have four beats per measure, and that is so common that that is often referred to as common time. And sometimes you'll just see a letter C in the beginning of the piece of music saying, you're in 4-4, four, four. okay? But the Streets of Laredo is in 3-4 time. And when we count this off, this tablature, we're going to count 1, 2, 3, rest, rest. And we come in on that second, third beat that I mentioned, okay? Let me show you again how I'm going to count this off. One, two, three, one, two, three, like that, okay? All right, let's turn the metronome on. Let's try to play this. I'm going to play it slower than some of you want me to play it. But I would rather you complain that I'm playing something slower than you want me to play it than everything she played was too fast, I couldn't learn anything. Okay, so we're going to play this all the way down at 50 beats per minute. Really, Kara? 50 beats per minute. Okay. One, two, three, one, two. Okay, now I want to give you a little, um, let's talk just for a second about syncopation and what that means. Syncopation is when there's an accent put on an and beat of a measure. So when we're counting this, we're counting quarter notes. One, two, three, one, two, three. When you hear this song naturally, it's got more syncopation in it. about that. Please just play it like I'm asking you to play it here. Once you get more used to the song and if you want to put that syncopation in and play it with a little more feeling, by all means do so. But when you're first learning it, keep it real straight and on those quarter notes for me, okay? All right, there's a harmony part here. That first section when I started playing it, I initially, I think I started off in second position and then I switched to first and I stayed there. I think that first section, the regular melody, uh, you'll probably want to play that in first position. However, the harmony part, I'm seeing some fives in there. So I'm going to try to play that in second position. I will jump out of second position to catch my ones and then jump back into second position. Okay. All right, we're going to count it off the same way. Four, uh, three full beats and then a one, two, and then we come in on that fifth fret. Okay. okay. One, two, three, one, two, three. Yeah. 
rest. ought to be able to, with some practice, you ought to be able to play the harmony part while I'm playing the lead part, the first section, and vice versa. When I'm playing the lead section, you ought to be able to play the harmony part. So practice that and then try playing the duet along with me on these videos, okay? Now, likewise, I'm going to play the chords for you now. Um, I think what I want to do uh, is just strum each chord three down strums. One, two, three. So I'm going to play the chords for you now, and you, I want you to practice the chords along with me, but that you can also rewind this and play the melody notes over the chords that I'm playing, right? You can do that with all the lessons. That's the joy of having these videos, okay? Um, the lead player would come in on the one, two, three, one, two, three, and then the rhythm player is going to start strumming on that first beat of the first full measure, okay? I will sing the first note so you'll, you'll kind of get the gist of what I'm saying. Okay, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. One, two, three. Since that went so fast, why don't we go ahead and knock out page 43, Worried Man Blues, uh, in this video as well. And I'll try to make a note on the videos letting you know exactly where Worried Man Blues starts so you can fast forward through Streets of Laredo when you need to. Worried Man Blues, uh, let's see what I've written up here at the top of the page. Like most of the songs we'll learn in this book, this song's in 4-4 four, four time, 4 beats in each measure. I'll be sure to let you know when that changes like I just did in Streets of Laredo. Uh, take a moment to map out your fingering on this song. I will probably play it in second position using my index finger to play my first uh, and both the first and second frets. Okay, so yeah, I think I'm going to stick with that decision because I see lots of twos and fours and I only see a couple of ones. So I'm going to play in second position and I'll use my index finger to jump out of second position to grab that first fret whenever I need it. Uh, <laughs> See, you might want to do that at about the same tempo. Let's see here. Yeah, let's keep it at the same tempo, which happens to be 50. And those speed demons that are listening to this, you can just play it on your own. Speed up your own metronome. Those of us that want to go slow, we, we, need, to, we need to stick together and play this slowly. All right? Okay, I'm going to count um, a full four beats, and then one, two, Three, and we'll come in on that pickup note, okay? One, two, three, four, one, two, three. Down, up, rest, rest. Plot out your 
your course and stick with it with it. Here we go. Rest, rest. Okay, now let's talk about a couple of things here. Um, yeah, you really need to think about what positions you're going to play this one in because as I was playing it, I almost felt like on the second line, um, I'm in second position, rest, rest, and here I'm using my third finger, so I'm still in second position on that fourth fret, my third finger. And then I had told you earlier that I was going to use the same finger to slide up to one. But you know something? I might hit that one with my first finger, hit the two with my second finger, and use that four note to get back into second position. So I very well, let me show you again, very well might jump out of position to do one, two, and then get back into second position on that four right there using my third finger. I very well might do it that way. Okay? Plot it out. Um, go over those measures when you make that decision, how you're going to fret that. And again, there's no wrong or right answers on this. But you do need to be consistent. Okay? That's, that's a key thing to remember. However you are playing something, you need to decide how you're going to play it, whether it's a strumming hand or whatever it is you're going to do and practice that with some consistency, right? Don't change it up every single time, not at this level that you're at right now. When you get advanced, you can do anything you want to and mix it up, but right now you're laying down the foundations and you're building up a lot of muscle memory, so try to be consistent with the way you're practicing things, okay? Um, the other thing I wanted to call to your attention is in the very last line, we go from the B string open, rest, and then we jump down to the second fret, on the fourth string. Okay, that's a kind of a big jump with our right hand. So that might be something you need to practice. I, If I was having trouble with that, I would take the last line and I would play it the first measure. Rest. And I would probably just repeat that second measure that I'm having trouble with. And practice that jump with my pick. Okay? As I said in a previous lesson, you shouldn't have everything where you don't have to look at your guitar right now. So if you have to look down at your right hand, look down there and make sure you're hitting the right string. Okay? I don't want you to feel like you could do this blindly yet. All right, let's talk about the chords. Um, I don't think I suggested a strumming pattern on this, but how about we use the down, down, up, down, down, up, boom, diddy, boom, diddy. So we'll go one, two. All right, let's try these chords together. One, two, three, four. It takes a worried man to sing a worried song. Keep that right hand going when you switch. It takes. So that's very important. Try to play that along with me and keep that right hand going no matter what the left hand does. All right? Try it that way. All right, very good. That's a good stopping point. Let me see if the dog barks again. 
it's perfect timing because she just came back from the neighbor's house and she's howling out my door saying, hey, I want to come in. Yeah, she probably will bark again. All right, gang. Anyway, the next time I see Adobe, will be back in her teaching chair, and we will be playing together page 44 and 45 because we are going to learn our B7 chord. Uh, okay? So thanks so much. Uh, thanks for being patient with yourself and uh, taking the time to go over these lessons. I will see you next time when Adobe Joe returns. Bye-bye.